Good afternoon, everybody, and how is everybody on this wonderfully warm Monday morning or Monday afternoon up here in very, very sunny Dumfries? Uh, we're getting back to summer again. Hope you're all well. Um, I will just bring in my co host. We have got uh, Scott, the blue light turner, and we've got Dale from Maple Tree Studios. So they'll be keeping me up with the chat. Um, if you could, if you're going to be asking any questions, uh, could you highlight the question in the chat uh, with question, uh, preferably in uppercase letters so the guys can see it, and then we'll stop and I'll uh, I'll try and answer them. I'm not promising anything, but I'll certainly try. Right, I'll stick you guys back in the background. Um, I'll, well, start, I'll start uh, getting set up. Um, stick that back on the... Put it under the overhead. I'll start getting this piece mounted onto the lathe and then we can get, get going. I'll stick the stool over there for the moment. Should we let you know who's in, Dale? Uh, Wayne, sorry. Yes, please. Uh, so we've got 26 watching already, which is really good. Oh, very um, good. We have Lenny, Twisted Trees, John, Steve Ash, some fat bloke called the Blue Light Turner. Again, uh, yeah, Mick Juice, uh, Ian in the shed, Mike, Wivy Woodshed. Is that Andrew or Andy? Am I right oh, in thinking that? Can't remember now. Um, Jennifer, uh, Steve Ellis, Dad's in, uh, Larry, Colin, Caitlin the cat. Yeah, and she, to know, Caitlin. <laughs> she says she can't stay long, but she's here for a little bit. Oh, I imagine uh, there should be some schoolage going on. Miss T's. There's hey, some. Hey. Uh, there's some random bull bloke called Maple Tree Studios. He's not a bloke. He's fat and bald. <laughs> <laughs> Get your facts right. Accuracy Ge required. Georgian, <laughs> Greg, Hi, Georgian. and Baz. Man. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a tenon on this end to start off with, and then I'll flip it round and actually get it held in the chuck before I start trying to round it off. Uh, as you can see, this thing is going all over the place, so it should be good fun. We like a bit of fun at lunchtime. For now. Right, turning it just over 650. I'm just going to get this flattened off. I'm on my eighth cup of coffee this morning. Are you eight? Yeah, eight. Been on the go since 6 a.m. I'm slacking stuff. I think I'm on about four or five. But then I haven't really stopped. I've been running around and doing a bit. Tell you what, that bull goes hasn't been used for a while and I haven't sharpened it. I was going to oh. ask, I was I was actually going to ask, I was going to say, okay, maybe we could change the camera angle, wind so we can see the, the you know, the end that you were doing. Right, okay. Oh, he's got the gold one out. Gold. Oh, he's got oh, the gold one out. Is that, getting, is that um, getting bleached out at all? Uh looks fine from here, mate. It's a lot, but it's much whiter than it was in the other one. But it's not bleached right. there, I don't think. Because I've got all me, all me lights are out. The 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 lights that I tend to use to turn them, because they do tend to to bleach everything out. The fuel stopped in the way on that one. Young Gareth Dalton Wood Tunning is in. Oh, hi Gareth. It's a new name. Hey, Gareth. Hey, Lenny doesn't think it's bleached out. Okay, thank you. That nah, looks right from here as well. Yeah. So have you had your afternoon siesta yet, Dale? Oh, no. We're, we're, we're on for a full-on... We're on for a full-on day today. 
Is it one of those days of work, is it? Is, I mean, I can, I'm a belly yourself kind of thing. I've got an early start most days just to just to be able to stand still. Yeah. So I can have a bit of a lunchtime live with various chaps and chapesses. Yeah, I got uh, rudely awoken this morning by a ready mix lorry. Awesome for you. No, um, next door's have the driveway put in. Ah. Uh, I don't think it's going to last very long. Though. They poured two massive slabs of concrete uh -huh. six inches deep with okay. no reinforcing. Do you know if they used fibre creep for the put the fibre and the actual concrete? It's a certain max. We did it. Uh, Wayne, um, yes. the, there's no question directly uh, from the, the chat, but it's one for me. There's obviously a lot of bar conclusions and, and, yeah. and stuff on the outside. Is the intention to try and keep them as part no, of the form? No, or? no. If you have a look um, around about here, um, this is probably going to end up being a hole in the side. Okay. This part here. Um, Remember the cams? The, away from shape, the, sh the shape of, of yeah. when is going to be narrow here, which is going to be the uh -huh. bottom. Sure. It's going to flare out and come in, you know, like a, um, yeah. the usual vase shape that I do. Oh, I'll just put a, another groove in there. So it will hold into my chuck better. Cool. There's a, a type of concrete you can get that will come in a ready mix truck that has, um, uh, like, I'm going to use the term here, carbon fiber, but it's really plastic, which acts like a reinforcer. It means you don't need the mesh. It's got a yeah, no, this is that. one of those, you know, like mixer, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's Jobby. one of them. It's the same thing. That's how it turns up. They put all the fibers in, you know I mean? They put the fibers in and mix it in the truck en route, as it were, so it's all fully mixed in. You know, oh, if it's no, one it's of them, they won't need it. No, this was one of those trucks that has got like a load of ballast in it, a load of cement and oh. stuff. And... So like, um, all right, okay. Yeah, it's one of those that like mixes what you need when you're there. Yeah, that's that's a, that's the sort of thing. I'm, I mean, if the, when you order it, it's called C something or other, and it turns up with the stuff already embedded, and yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's have, nah. let's, you know, I mean, let's wait and see. And my floor, my 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 heavy slab in my back, my back of my house was done that way. Yeah. That meant we could. We just needed a hardcore base. Now, as you can probably tell with this, the way it's swung around there, it is mm -hmm. very off balance. Oh. Always tighten on all of the tightening points. And if you are turning green wood like this is, I brought this apple tree down about three or four weeks ago, so it is very, very green. Always go back to your chucking point after a wee while, just to make sure that it stays tight. Because on green wood, the chuck will compress. Out in the I... chat, you have Mr. Senior, Glenn himself. Hi, Glenn. Uh, Mick Juice. Scott, how much has been raised so far? So, last night, I was on the Makes International podcast. Um... Before then, we were at 988. JP sold, uh, auctioned off one of his bowls. That went for 135. And Claire's bit finished on eBay this morning for 62. So I think we're up to about one 1,150 so far. And we've still got some bowls to auction off, which will be fantastic. So thank you, everyone. Now, this, oh, is a, this is a spindle blank, but as you can see, it has got some branches coming out and other things going on with it. So that's the reason I'm using my ball gout. I hope you're all right, Lenny. What's Lenny been up to? He had an accident yesterday, hurt his back. He's got new tools, but he can't get to the workshop to use them. Oh. 
send them over here, Lenny. I'll use them for you. I was just going to say them, but if there's, a, if there's an issue, we can break them in for you. Yeah. Nick with Flaming Tunnels in the chat. Hi, Hi Nick. Um, I might have missed this one earlier on. I apologize. Steve Jeremiah. Hi, Steve. Yet another Steve. I'd like to say the collection of Steve's, I think, is a, is a, is a, is a podcast. I think that's a collective noun for a, a collection of Steve's, a podcast. Podcast. Is it a pod of dolphins? Is it? Where you get a load yeah, of dolphins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A live of Steve's. <laughs> live of Steve. No, we'll stick with a pod. Yeah. Rather than a weed. Well, I'm gonna have chat to going really slow down in YouTube. So, in YouTube, it seems fine. In StreamYard, it's always a bit suspect. Yeah. You know, it's like chat's moving up really quickly in, in YouTube, and, and then it kind of all catches up. Caitlin, the cat's asking you a question, young sir. Yep. Uh, sorry, I'm being stupid. She was asking young Mr. Oh. Scott one. Oh, yeah. did I see your yeah, message sorry, earlier? Sorry. No, no, Caitlin, I didn't. Sorry. Um, hang on, let me scroll back up. You were the question for the audience, Wayne. Have you got a harp on your t shirt? It looks like the Irish government logo. No, I'll just show you the t shirt in a second. It does look like a harp from here. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, why can't I see Caitlin's comment? Right, that's the t shirt. That's my P45 T-shirt from Yorkshire Grit. Um, I'll wear this whenever there's a chance I'm going to be using colour. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, was it a message on here in the chat or was it on another social media platform? I, I disagree, Steve. Steve says the correct term is an amaze, amazement of Steve's. I'm thinking it's more of a more of a, a break of Steve's. Thinking back to Steve Davis. <laughs> Mark says he's meant to be working. Hello, Mark says, sorry, not chatting much. I'm turning bottle stoppers. Ooh. Ooh. Are they bottle stoppers or are they something else? So as you can see, this bit here, that's going to end up being open when I actually get this hollowed out. And I might leave the sand in until I do get it hollowed out. I'm just going to make a couple of cuts with my... thought you were going to say I'm going to make a cup of tea there. A couple of cuts with a spindle gouge. 
Uh, Di Prout is in the chat. Hey, Di. And then that should be the, the outside done. What is by watching? I've got a collective name for Steve. Go on him. Given there's so many, it's an unoriginality. <laughs> <laughs> I was going for something with naming, baby naming kind of thing, but I couldn't quite find Cam and join up. Might need a bit more work. Is Caitlin still in the chat? Oh, I think so. Because I've scrolled right back through and I can't see a message. I've checked my social media and can't see a message. I've got a laser applied delivery coming tomorrow. Me too. Wayne, it's maybe worthwhile doing a, a, the, the downward shot now, now that the shape's kind of formed up. Um, well, I'm but, just I'm probably just going to start hollowing it out now. So right, oh, maybe not then. <laughs> just get this top straightened off a bit. Nice, <coughs> uh, she's the best censoring too. We've got Scott. Don't know. It depends how many fruit fruit juices you go to buy. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'll borrow my mate's book a card and go to the whole table. Uh, Mike Joe says there's that many Steve's at his local wood turning club. Be surprised they haven't changed the name. <laughs> yeah, we got quite a few Steve's in ours. Uh, but then uh, we've all got our names on our shirts. Oh, what, like embroidered or sticky yeah. badges? No, embroidered. It's like the club shirts you buy. All right. You've got the club logo and then you get whatever you want put on it. I might wind someone up and when I get my new one because the other one I'm um, slowly outgrowing. I might just get the blue light turn up on it. Is that quickly outgrowing? No, it, 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 swiftly outgrowing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blaming it on lockdown, Wayne. Lockdown and Jaffa oh. cakes. Jaffa's, you can't blame Jaffa's. Jaffa's are the, the foot of the gods. No, so Steve Jeremiah says, sorry for the long question, chaps. No, I don't know if I missed it. So I don't see the question. Steve, could you repeat your question, please? Yeah, I didn't see one either. Unless it had something horrible in it and it's been censored. Nope, still does it. Right, I've turned the speed down now to uh, around about 450 to do the drilling. Did you see young Caitlin's message, young Scott? Um, Scott, I'm hoping to arrange one of my pieces to be auctioned for you. Caitlin, that would be fantastic. Um, Yes, I will. Let me um I'm sure I follow you on Facebook, but let me just double check. If I don't, I apologize, I should be. Uh, Robert Dub says Mick Jews, they're only real Steve's if their name is Steve Vin. Lots of Stefan imposters out there. You can call them Steph as opposed to Steve. What a good shout. That's a good shout.
You might notice some pieces coming flying out the side now because I'm getting down into where the, the void is. That was an impressive sound. Well, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to take this tail stopped a bit. It's starting to stiffen up. You know, somewhere on the others of that's what she said, but I can't find a connection. It just yeah. <laughs> So I've just sent you a message on Facebook, Caitlin. Um, once Wayne's live over, I'll contact you properly and we can have a proper chat. I'm a man and I can't multitask. John PBH says, ooh, that could be called Stevist rubber dub. <laughs> I was going to say something then. I won't. I will bite my tongue. Your dad says that that's a... Uh, 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 Scott's dad says that's the sound of a Scotsman's wallet, Wayne. <laughs> uh, Dai says, question. Wayne, is there not a risk of the Forstner grabbing the void? No, there's not. He said, hopefully. Uh, Jennifer Stroughton is asking, question, what are you making? I am making a small hollow form out of a piece of apple branch wood. His poor apple tree took the uh, brunt of it just so he could uh, just so he could do the live today, guys. A fairly heavy shaft on that first little bit. Yeah, that's the extension. I must get it bloody sharp, and it isn't. It isn't young, that sharp. Young SK Crafts is in the chat. Hi, Steve. Steve. In fact, I probably would have been better going. No, I'm not bothering now. That looks like it's addressed to you, Scott. Bye. Die, Scott. What have you? I have you got a lot of for auction. I'll turn something else. Um, so we've had a lot of folds die. Um, I've got hundreds of pens. Um, so if you want to turn something else, because um, I think people might be bored of doing that, but whatever you want to turn, everything is gratefully received. And as I keep saying, I can't thank all you guys in the makers enough for supporting. And you don't have to turn it. You just have to make something. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be turned. So Dale did a scroll saw. Andy did a carving. Um, I've got a feeling that my mate that does the horseshoe art is playing with horseshoes. Uh, now, the reason I'm getting a lot of wobble on this is because when I started the drilling, it wasn't properly centered. Young Gareth Dalton is saying, right, I'm fed. I've got a massive brew. Time to get back to the lathe. Have fun, guys and girls. See you later. Somehow I feel that slightly Americanish thing I said does not have any bearing on the gentleman's actual voice. But with a name like Gareth, I'm willing to, put, I'm willing to have a small wage and maybe a Welsh connection. Oh, do you know what? I was about to say the same. The other thing you've got to watch when you're doing drilling like this is not to make the inside diameter of the vase bigger than the outside diameter. We ca that's called joining the TARDIS club. No, that's called doing a Scott. <laughs> um, young Steve Jeremiah is asking a question. Can you apply Danish oil over lemon oil once dry? As I've turned a burr and not happy with the matte finish. Don't fancy wax getting into the tiny cracks. Yes, you can. 
once the lemon oil is cured and is dried you could quite easily put danish oil over the top no problem young gareth is equipping us with enough information now he says he sounds more like scott or uh i'm i'm he's from bed bread bedford born and bred he in cheshire now but he's actually moving to wales boy oh i'm a southerner so how can he sound not me closer to you i feel than perhaps a, a lad from the valleys right Turn this round and we'll get this hollowed out. I nearly said I was a Brighton boy then, but... Yeah, that would have been uh, hilarious. You'd never have loved that, though. <laughs> that would have been a ringtone. This tone. part here, there's a very thin part here between the lip and the, the void. That might crack and break away. We'll just have to wait and see. So I'm going to start off with my Simon Hope 6mm um, hollower. It is set, or the, the cutter is set at a 45 degree angle. So it makes it nice and easy to cut. You need it on or about center height. Just to start the hollowing process. People ask me about hollowing tools quite a lot. If you can't afford to go out and buy hollowing tools, or tools that are specially made for Halloween. Try using a ball gouge, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, young Georgie Ann is confusing you and I, Scott. Why well, she right, become so a Scotsman? When you're using the ball gouge, if you have the flute pointed at the twelve o'clock area, okay. Then what you do is twist the flute all the way around so it's pointing at about seven o'clock. <coughs> and what you're doing there, you're actually putting the upper part of the bevel on. That would be the cutting edge there. So you're putting the upper wing of the bevel onto the piece of wood. So you're not actually going to be cutting anything. So what happens is you go in with it around about seven o'clock like that. And that's the bevel. And my camera's in the flaming way. So how am I going to do this? Right, I'll move that camera out of the way at the moment. I'm not actually on that one. So we're hitting on that upper bevel on the upper wing, so nothing's happening. And then if you slowly bring the flute around that's at about eight o'clock now and that's just starting to cut so you can actually use that and if you tip it back further back towards the seven o'clock you can actually gauge how deep a cut you're going to get so you don't really need to have specialist following tools when you're hollowing and another thing that a lot of people tend to think is when they're talking about hollowing tools, they tend to talk about swan neck hollowing tools. Okay. You really only need a swan neck hollowing tool. Like if I put this tool in here, right, I've got the, the far side of the opening there. If I put the tool actually touching on that opening and going across, you can see on this side, that's where I'm going to be hitting. I can clean out all of this vase with a straight tool. I don't need to have a swan neck. Swan neck tools are mo used more for when you've got uh, either a very small opening or you're doing a wider piece. <coughs> if you use a swan neck tool, don't have it on the swan neck because it will easily grab and pull it over. Always have it on the straight part of the tool, okay? That way you've got the straight part of the tool actually lined up with the cutter, so there's less chance of it actually grabbing and twisting and totally spoiling the piece you're working on. 
couple of things out in the chat. Uh, yeah. For a start, Matthew Gallagher is in the chat. Hi, Matthew. Um, Steve Jeremiah says, thanks, Wayne, for the explanation. Um, there's a, some chat chat about Welsh out there. Uh, Lung Lenny is offering, I love watching turning, but I'm going to start doing it. It's a whole skill in itself. I'll keep to flat work on my table, but it amazes me what you guys do. Thank, Thank you. Wayne is the ones to watch to learn from. Yes. Uh, oh, Deanne saying we all sound strange. Oh, Deanne, where are you from, please? <laughs> George Ann's from New England, I think. Have we got to stop speaking Martian? No, we're well, from New England, then we know the accent we're targeting. Uh, Rubber Dub says that's an Irish P45 in Wayne's t shirt. Has Yorkshire joined the Republic? <laughs> There's one that wind up JP about. Yeah, it was JP who chose the colours. He, if he's got an Irish one on there, there's a bit of fun to be had. Are we absolutely sure it's an Irish P45, folks? Here's the thing. It's always funny as hell, but it's just, it's just become a bit of fun with JP. I said, Colin, I love the entire country. Will was a bit odd, other than that. I used to, I used to uh, live in Wales for a while. I've only ever lot. been to Wales once, and that was when I was a kid. Spent a lot of time down in Pembroke, Abercannon, uh, Martha, uh, Rogerstone, um, Newport, and obviously Cardiff. Yeah, I've got a feeling I'll be going to Cardiff beginning of September. Who? Why? Well, well, what? How the Welsh eldest, taste you? My eldest is at Cardiff Uni. Ah, so my so my wife uh, said you did her masters in information tech at uh, at Cardiff. So that's why we that's why we moved there for a while so she could do the course, and then we kind of hung around for a few years. Baza says yep. for some apple tree seeds. He's giving you a super chat. One pounds ninety nine. Oh, cheers, Barry. Perhaps some golden delicious. So now I'm moving <laughs> on to a, um, a bigger uh, Simon Hope hollow and tool. It's still got a six mil carbide cutter on there, but it has got a, a quite a wide flat bar, which makes it more stable, especially when I'm getting further down the bottom. And you can serve now, more beer of, on it. One of the reasons I like doing these hollows with the voids in is that I can actually see how thick the piece is That's or true. how thin the walls are. Guy says he has seven generations going back in Abercrombie. She has a Heinz 57 accent. What, what can it be? I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said a Heinz got an accent. She's got a Heinz 57 ten of beans accent. <laughs> Steve Jeremiah says, Wayne, I've got a three-foot trunk of very green plum. Should I split it right through the centre to stop it splitting or leave it as it is? I've sealed both ends, by the way. That really all depends on what you want to do with it. Um, if you're going to use it for spindle work, uh, I would leave it with the end sealed. If you want to use it for bowl work, again, depending on how uh, or what diameter it is, uh, you might be as well splitting it in half, getting rid of the pith, uh, and then sealing it. Uh, young Mark shop dogs off. See you, Mark. Mark. 
Myers says it's seven inches thick. I assume he's talking about the wood. The other option you've got is to cut it into ball blanks, rough turn it, then seal it rough turn, and then come back in a few months when it's dry and finish it. Scott's dad says Steve Plum is terrible for splitting, so I would cut it over 12 inches that it die. asking Dale what else could you be talking about in reference to the seven inches. Just prior to that in the chat, we did have my parents are Scottish, so that creeps in. And seven inches thick, said Steve Jeremiah. You know, quite narrow parents, I thought. Is asking a question in general. Has anyone ever used an Arbitec disc carver? I'm interested in getting one, but concerns me that it goes on an angle grinder. Yeah, I used one. I used one the other week doing a piece of wall art in one of my lives. Yeah, I've not used the one on the grinder. I've got the mini Arbitec disc for the prop tom. That was just something falling down. Don't worry about it. Just don't get one of those chainsaw blades for your uh, angle grinder. Now, the thing with the um, with the cutters, the the six mil cutters, they can leave grooves, um, so you can use a a round high speed speed high speed steel disc just to clean the grooves up. Hold it on an angle because you're not going to get in there to do any sort of decent standing. Unless you use uh, some sort of long reach uh, sander. I don't mind your goal of them, haven't you? Oh, what, like the long reach Simon Hope? Yeah. Now, the reason I'm getting a lot of movement on the tool here when I'm cutting is obviously because I didn't have the drill centered properly. So it's actually drilled just a wee bit off center. Not a hell of a lot to worry about. Let's get rid of some of this excess now.
Yeah, that's getting there. up a bit more and as you can see it is actually cutting it is shavings that i'm getting off this I don't know if I put if I put this on the overhead if you'll actually be able to see the the tool as it's working. Right. Please not. See you see. Got a very dry piece of London plane on the lathe waiting to finish. Yes, sir. Yeah, indeed. I've just not heard you that quiet for that long. Uh, being harassed. Uh, at work. I have to duck back in a little while. As you do. Lots of chat about whales in the uh, chat still. Down in, down in the valleys, isn't it? <laughs> you can see that quite spectacularly well. See the two cool. working through that. And that's looking really special, Wayne. Thank you. No, if I go a little bit thinner, I'm going to come out the other side as well. Yeah, because I can see my finger through there. Ooh, lampshade. Right, what I am going to do, because at the moment I've only drilled down to about this depth. So I think I'll just drill a little bit more. 
so I can make it a little bit deeper. Barry Fisher's just joined. Hey, Barry. Steve Ash is saying that he's uh, guessing your left hand is nice and clean, clean by now. Sorry, I missed that, Scott. Steve Ash is saying he's guessing your left hand is nicely steam cleaned by now. Yep, it is. And uh, Lenny's saying it reminds him of the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, I see where you're going with that one. Just need to turn a sphere to go on the top of it, Wayne. Okay, I think that'll do. Just get that a little bit deeper. Colin Sandan, that's scary. So seeing as that's quite green, Wayne, will that change shape? Will that walk? Or... Oh, yes. It will. Claire's just put up that her ocean um, art that she put up for auction yeah. actually sold for £87. Very good, Claire. Very good. Thank you so and, much for doing that. And it's been brought by one of my colleagues. Yeah, well, right. Which is cool. It just, hey, shows, Sorry. it just shows that sharing the links at work, work. Um, Glenn Senior offers this insight, Wayne, and I quote, it's got a bloody hole in it. <laughs> That's so I can see what I'm doing, Glenn. Glenn inf is informing us that he's made another 70 tins. Have you seen that one from Baz, uh, Dale? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Where is it? Uh, above Glenn. About pin list clamps. No, on the must be on the YouTube stream. I'm not going to the thingy one. All right, Dale. Is there a better product out there to convert to scroll store to pin list? These clamps are SHIT. Fourth one is snap now. Um. So I think the short answer is there. Are, uh, well, I guess it depends on your, your machine. Um, are you buying the Axminster clamps? 
And I think that's the ones he's been using. I think so. Right, I'm going to do a final clean up with the um, you, the round cutter. Do you think that what I'll 70, do? Do you think Glyn's seventy tins a payment for Andy Zorka? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He said he'd pay him. He didn't say how. Tins of grit. No, I think he's having to sell the seventy tins to pay for the Zorka. <laughs> That's a whale of a project. Oh. Oh. Here all week, try the view. There's a uh, parcel on its way to you and uh, Joe, why I remember, Glyn. I've still got a, a wee bit there that I want to get rid of. It's not going as smooth as I'd like. The dice says, I'm on an Audi special scroll store. Clamped to find. Had to replace the drive bearing, though. Some of the Audi tools and the little tools are quite good. Well, it's, is... the, it's the Audi one that I've got. And to tell you the truth, I'm just using the pinless hangers that it came with. The, the challenge, the, the challenge, um, if you're using fairly, if you're, not, if you're not doing a lot of opening and closing, if you're not doing a lot of, uh, of work, um, um, the path will last quite a long time. What's interesting is, is that these axemen, the ones seem to be breaking a lot. Normally they thread out rather than break. So there's, um, there's a kit that, uh, uh, there's a kit that I think from memory, Rekka Perdu, uh, Baz, I'll have a quick fish around it and send you. There's also an Olsen kit too, but really you're after just the clamps, really. So it's, it's finding somewhere we can get by the clamps and sort of bulk. Axe mounts are, are very popular because they sell them. Um, um, but they do, they do. A few people have said that they've, they've broken. I would go on the blow to them and shout at them and say, This is the fourth one that snapped. Maybe a bad bunch. Yeah, yeah Axe mounts just normally a good prick customer service, don't they? Right, what I'll do, I'll just put a or replace it or replace it with them. A starting point in here for um part enough that we can get start to get it start standard. Uh Paul Lockwood's just joined. Sorry he's a bit late. Has he missed much? Uh just about all of it, Paul. Oh, Dad's gonna, uh, saying goodbye. He's off to finish cutting up some mulberry. Um, See you, Keith. He's, got, he's gonna go and dance around the mulberry bush. Barry, give me a shout after the live, sir, and uh, let's have a quick chat just to try to work out. Um, I seem to remember you as a sort of Hegner clone type machine. Um, it's worth us having a chat. Right, what I'm going to do, and if you can, you're always as well doing this. Um, a lot of people, when they power sand them, they just tend to power sand on bowls. But if you power sand on spindle work, you tend not to get the, the radial lines when you power yeah. sand. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're always as well, if you can, either power sand or use an inertia sander, even when you're doing spindle work. Will the void wreak havoc with a pad, though? It shouldn't do, as long as, you, as long as you're actually holding the pad fairly flat onto the, onto the piece. That way you're not holding it like that, so it can rip the, the pad off. So you want to hold it either centre or towards the bottom of the pad. And Nick saying that he's uh, clamped some axes to break as well. So there might be a dodgy batch. That also depends if they're, if they're screw down ones or if they're hangers. If they're hangers, you tend to have less problems. 
if the screw down um, we tend to have a, a fracture point. Yeah, I'm not a scroll store so I'm uh... I can't comment on that. If you get some bits, get some bits that you miss, just use the the pad with the lathe stationary. This has already started to move, this has. How thin is it, Wayne? Ah, it's probably fairly thick. That's probably about three mil, four mil. Up at the top, it's probably about one, but then it gets thicker as it goes down. See you later, Baz. See you, Baz. Now, the reason I've left it till now to sand is that obviously I've gotten all the inside cleared out. So um, it's easier to sand because uh, if, it, if it was still solid, this would still be very wet and it wouldn't sand very easy. But seeing as how it's all cleared out now, it'll sand a hell of a lot better because it's quite thin. That'll be your one shot. <laughs> Right, um, what do I need now? All right, I'm just going to use my Dremel now, just with a, um, a carbide on there, so if I can find one. I'm just going to clean the edges around the opening. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we got 49 watching. Well, oh, thanks, guys. Brilliant. Don't forget to uh, hit the thumbs button for Wayne. No, Chris, you didn't miss anything exciting. That's uh, a natural hole from the piece that Wayne was turning. Cheers, Lenny. Right, I'm not going to sand this. No, not going to stand it. Not going to colour it. I mean, Ooh. no, it looks really nice. The inside, I'm just going to finish with some cellulose sanding sealer. So Colin's off. He's got to take his uh, good lady to see the doctor. He'll finish watching when he gets back. Cheers, Colin. Uh, yeah, that's my task for this afternoon. Take or go out with the uh, wife. She doesn't want me. She just wants my NHS ID card. Oh, right. Sports director doing 50% off or something. I wouldn't buy anything from them. Uh, she only wants cycle helmets. We tried uh, Halfords. We've tried... Evans, nowhere's got any, so. No, I just wouldn't buy anything from them on principle. It ruined my football club. Yeah? Yeah. Well, he owns it, doesn't he? Who did you support, Wayne? Newcastle. Uh... Yeah, magpie. Yeah. I don't know. You might have like moving to Scotland. You might have changed to Rangers or or, or Queen of the South, which is the Dumfries team. At least they call it the team. <laughs> Paul Lockwood says he never knew Wayne liked Ipswich so much. <laughs> I must be missing something out on there. Uh, Di is saying sports direct ruined my local outside shop too, so he's boycotted them. So I don't go in there that often. Oh, cheers, Lenny. I'll have a look at that, if it can save me going out. It means I can get more paint on the wall. All right, so I'm just going to be using uh, Chestnut Products Microcrystalline Wax. As a finish, you put that on with your hand, one. No, it's a piece of air. Uh, sorry, which camera I'm on? Oh, this one. Oh, done. Uh, I, lay, I leave a, a piece of paper in the tin all the time, covered in wax. Yeah, it just looked like you were rubbing it in with your hand. And the wax from your 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 thirty year wood turning hands just come off naturally and good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he only gets half the wax now though, because he put a hole in it the other day. Boom boom. 
Oh, Lenny's has got built-in LEDs front, rear, and sides. What are they? Indicators? I'm not a big fan of cycle helmets, but right. Have to keep I'm indoors. just going up the um, buffing wheel into my drill, and I'm going to actually buff this while the drill is stationary. You are. So don't fancy doing this while the lead's running. Nah. How are we doing on time anyway? Oh, that's uh, good. Just over the hour, mate. So now we'll just get it parted off and then that will be us done. I say I'm Wayne Wax 3000. <laughs> and whenever you're using the part until the part off, always start with the handle down and the bevel rubbing, and then slowly lift your hand up. You'll probably not be able to say that. The bevel's rubbing on the top there. Slowly lift the handle up till you start the cut. Because you want to have a proper a proper cut on this. You don't go straight in with the parting tool. That's a scraping cut. You want to get a proper cut on this. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold on to that. I might be able to. And then just use my skew chisel. Is Steve Twidell in? No. I've not seen him. No. If no, he's no. here, he's, he's hiding. Right, I'll just use my skew chisel to take the nubbity nub off. Because <laughs> if, if Steve had been in, I would have owed him another 25 pence. Ah, we're out of the EU, mate. He's going to have to go through World Trade Organization terms on that. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping you would actually see the light through the other side, but you, you can't really. Not to worry. Right, I'll change cameras. Bring me stool up. Have a sit down. Oh, yeah. There we are. Oh, there you go, guys. Small apple branch, hollow form with a void in there. That's really nice. Yep. No colour. Um, I did think about colouring it. Uh, that's why I've got the shirt on, just in case I did. <laughs> so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I did put a couple of 
a few tips in there for people. And some really nice comments. Oh, thank you, Lenny. Yes, John. Yeah, lovely vase from a knobbly piece of wood done by a knobbly turner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Uh, oh, Lenny's going to snap your hand off for it. <laughs> it's a bit mean. Won't be able to do any more turning. Yeah, the one-handed turner. Oh, man, yeah, I have seen a one-armed turner. Georgian, will the shape change as it dries? Yes, it will, Georgian. It is um, quite thin, um, and it was very, very wet. So I would expect, especially these parts here, all the bit where the all the knobbly bits were on the outside of the tree, uh, or the outside of the branch, I would expect over the next few days, uh, you'll have different drying times going on. So especially all these areas, they're all going to warp. Chris Cox is going to go back and see what he missed. Could you microwave it, says Steve Jeremiah? Yes, I could. If I wanted to speed up, this actually won't take very long to dry now, since I was only a couple of few mil thick. It will not take very long to dry at all. But if I wanted to um, speed up the process, yes, I could put it in the microwave. I would probably put it on probably half power i think it's an 800 watt microwave we've got so i'd probably put it on half power for about 30 seconds to start off with just to see how it goes the thing that i the thing that i would have to be careful with with this is that now the the bottom on this is still of oh, it's a good inch thick i didn't take this all the way down so it's a good inch thick so i would have to be careful about drying it out too quick because it would pro probably split uh, well, I bet that was a painful die up on them. No, there's a guy in the steer who turns one armed. Forgetting his name now. In fact, I haven't seen anything from him for uh, quite a long time. Okay, I'm going to have to scamper back to work, young man. Right, oh, guys. Hi. Um, I will end the show there. Deal's going back to work. Uh, Scott's got to get back to his painting, and I can feel the snooze coming on. <laughs> <laughs> I like your version of this. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 joy, the joys of retirement. <coughs> uh, Thanks for good. coming in again, guys. Much appreciated. No I've enjoyed no it. And uh, see you Wednesday night, where, yet again, I've got no idea what I'm going to be doing. But I'll I'll be there. Press the bloody button. Totally. <laughs> See you all in Andy's live.